boys and girls, welcome back to another awesome week of FKBC Kids Online. In case you don't know who I am, or maybe you forgot, I don't know. You guys, I think, have been eating like a lot of candy lately. Uh, my name is Pastor Daniel. I have the great joy of serving each and every one of you as your children's pastor, and I am so excited that we can be together once again this week. Now, before we get started this morning, boys and girls, I want to let you know that we are making a very special video for Thanksgiving, which is coming up. So here's what I need you to do. I need you to tell your parents that you need to record a video of saying three things that you're thankful for three things that you're thankful for. Let your parents know to record that video and then send it to me so I can put this amazing video together for the church. So what are you gonna do? Number one, you're gonna say, tell your parents, you're gonna say, Pastor Daniel said I need to make a video. Number two, in the video, you're gonna say three things that you're thankful for. And number three, you're gonna say, Pastor Daniel said to send him that video. Sound good? Good. All right, boys and girls, with that being said, you already know we are going to start off the way we start off every single week together. And how might that be? Prayer. I agree. All right, so let's bow our heads, close our eyes, and we will go to God in prayer. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, first of all, we acknowledge that you are the creator of all things. We acknowledge that um, you made every single one of us in your image and in your likeness. Father God, we acknowledge that you are worthy of us coming together uh, to worship you, to focus our time on you, to read your word. We confess our sins this morning. We know your word says that all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. So we call on your name this morning. We ask that you would forgive us of our sins and we ask that you would send your Holy Spirit to help us to go and sin no more. Father God, we thank you for waking us up this morning, breathing your breath of life into us. We thank you for our friends and families, our teachers, our pets, our brothers, our sisters. We thank you for every single thing that we have in this world, because without you, we wouldn't have anything. We pray for all of the missionaries that you have serving all around the world. We pray especially for the nation of the Philippines this morning. We pray for Freedom in Christ Church and Dismo Community Church. We pray for their pastors, their leaders, their missionaries, their students, their communities. We pray that you would continue to send your Holy Spirit to lead them, guide them, grow them, and protect them in accordance with your will and your word. So Father God, I ask that uh, you would open the hearts and the minds of these students this morning to receive your your word, that you would plant your seeds of the gospel in them, and that you would bring the increase and raise them up as students who love your word. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so boys and girls, we are continuing on our series. We are on unit 20, session number four. You guys are flying through the New Testament. We've been talking all about Jesus in his ministry here on earth. But first, we are going to keep our big picture question in mind, and that is this. Why did Jesus become human? Why did Jesus become human? Well, the answer is that Jesus became human to obey his father's plan and rescue sinners. So boys and girls, each time you hear a story about Jesus and you wonder, well, why did Jesus do that? I want you to remember this question and answer. Everything that Jesus did on earth was according to God's perfect plan. Now, boys and girls, we do have our big picture memory verse, which we are going to say all together this morning. As you know, it comes from John chapter 3, verse 30, and it's an easy one. Say it with me. John chapter 3, verse 30. He must increase, but I must decrease. Excellent job, boys and girls. So, Continuing on where we were, we know that when Jesus came onto the scene as an adult, he went to John the Baptist. And we know that Jesus obeyed God by being baptized. Then we learned about how Jesus was tempted by the devil in the wilderness, but we learned that even though Jesus was tempted, he never sinned. Soon John's followers started asking questions about Jesus, and John the Baptist told the people, to follow Jesus. Well, today's Bible story is about a special group of people Jesus called to follow him. They were his 12 disciples, and you're going to learn all about them in your Bible story video. So check it out. Jesus' 
his ministry had begun. He traveled around preaching about God and telling people to turn away from their sins. People started talking about Jesus and the things he was teaching. They were interested in what Jesus had to say. Large crowds followed Jesus around and listened to him teach. One day, Jesus was walking along the Sea of Galilee. He saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew. Peter and Andrew were fishermen. Jesus called out to them, Follow me, and I will teach you to fish for people. Right away, Peter and Andrew dropped their nets and followed Jesus. Later, he saw two more brothers. Their names were James and John. They were in a boat fixing nets with their father, Zebedee. Jesus called out to them, and right away they got up, left their father and the boat, and followed Jesus. Jesus went on and saw a man named Matthew, who was also called Levi. Matthew was sitting at the tax office. Matthew was a tax collector. Many people didn't like tax collectors because Aww. tax collectors were unfair. Jesus called out to him, follow me. So Matthew got up, left everything behind, and followed Jesus. Matthew had a big feast for Jesus at his house. Many tax collectors and sinners came to eat with Jesus and his disciples. The religious leaders saw this, and they didn't think Jesus should be friends with people who did wrong things. They complained to the disciples, why does your teacher eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus heard the religious leaders and said, people who are healthy don't need a doctor, but people who are sick do. I did not come to invite good people. I came to invite sinners to turn back to God. Later, Jesus gathered his followers together and chose 12 of them to be his disciples. Jesus' apostles would work closely with Jesus and would go out to tell others about him. These are the men Jesus chose. Simon, who was called Peter, Simon's brother, Andrew, James and John, who were called the Sons of Thunder, Philip and Bartholomew, Matthew and Thomas, James and the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot. Jesus came to earth to show what God is like and to save people from their sins. This is great news. Jesus told his disciples to tell others about him, and we are Jesus' disciples when we trust in him. Everyone in the world needs to hear the good news about Jesus. All right, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed your Bible story video for today. So, you saw that the disciples were busy when Jesus showed up. We know that Jesus called disciples to follow him. And isn't it amazing that they immediately left what they were doing and followed him? They didn't say, we will follow you, just let me finish up here. Or they didn't say, let me work to the end of the month and then I'll follow you. No, right? What did they do? Well, if we look in Mark chapter 1, verse 18, it says, immediately they left their nets and followed him. Two brothers left their dad, even left their dad behind, right? It says in verse 19 of Mark 1, it says, going on a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in their boat, mending their nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with hired men and followed him. Wow, how amazing is that? They literally just left everything they were doing to follow Jesus. You know, in those days, only the best and the brightest students approached teachers and asked to follow them. You see, the students watched their teachers really, really, really carefully. In fact, the students would try to be just like their teachers. And teachers didn't just allow anyone to follow them. Um, you'd have to be like a really hard worker, and the teacher had to think you were like really special too in order for him to let you follow him.
But Jesus, the thing is, he chose his followers from a group of people that no one probably ever thought was smart, enough to be students anyways. Jesus' followers were called disciples. Jesus chose some fishermen, Peter, Andrew, James, and John. Then he chose a tax collector called Matthew. The other men Jesus chose were Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, James, Thaddeus, Simon, and Judas. Yeah, two of Jesus' 12 disciples were both named James. And Jesus' disciples would learn from Jesus so that they could tell others the good news about why Jesus came to save people from their sins. So our main point for today is this, that Jesus called disciples to follow him. And that leads us to our Christ connection, boys and girls, which is that Jesus came to earth to show what God is like and to save people from their sins. This is amazing news for us. Jesus told his disciples to tell other people about him. And now, boys and girls, we are Jesus' disciples. And when we trust in him, everyone in the world we know needs to know the good news about Jesus. And so I want to remind you now, boys and girls, as I remind you at the end of every single week we have together, that we have all been called, just as Jesus' disciples were called, to follow him. But not just that. We've been called to call other followers of Jesus. I want to remind you this morning that you all are what? That's right. You are kids on mission. And our mission is to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus, how Jesus came to earth as fully God and fully man and how he lived a perfect life completely free of sin and how he died on the cross even though he was innocent for all the bad things that we did. And we rejoice because we know Jesus didn't stay dead and he didn't stay in the grave or on the cross, but that he rose again after the third day and that he defeated sin and death and the devil. And because of him, now when we believe in Jesus and trust in him, we have the free gift of grace which restores our relationship to God. Because of Jesus, we can have eternal life, an eternal life of worshiping and praising God. Boys and girls, I want to encourage you this week to tell someone the story about how Jesus chose his disciples and they left everything to follow him. You can remind them that that's what being a Christian is all about. It's leaving everything else to follow Jesus, to focus on the word of God and prayer and growing and being in your church and learning more about God. That's the purpose of our lives. And so I want to encourage you boys and girls to remember that you all have been called to be disciples of Jesus. That being said, boys and girls, we are going to bow our heads in a moment and pray. I want to remind you all to send those videos in of three things that you're thankful for so that we can get you in the main video. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes and we'll go to God in prayer. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for every single one of these students. Father, I pray that you would continue to teach them. I pray that you would continue to call them as your disciples. I pray that you would uh, continue to allow them to grow in their knowledge of you and your word. I pray that um, you would continue to pour into these students and raise them up as students with hearts after you that fear your word, Father. I pray that you would continue to remind them that they are kids on mission. Father God, I pray that with everything that's going on in the world, that you would send your Holy Spirit to comfort us, remind us that you are in control and we have no need to worry. Father, remind us that you have all things in your hands, including us. So I pray that you would continue to lead us and guide us throughout this week. I pray that you would um, continue to draw these students closer to you. And I pray that you would bring us all together again next week. So we love you. We praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, boys and girls, I will see you all next week. Bye.